Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I love helping teachers with all things technology, organization, and productivity. The end of the school year is quickly approaching and you're probably wondering, what the heck do I do with my Google Classroom? Have I graded everything? What do I delete? And what does archiving even mean? She'll know what that means. Don't worry. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through five steps to help you organize your Google Classroom at the end of the school year. Now these steps are specific to Google Classroom, but they probably still apply to other LMS or learner management systems as well. So keep that in mind. We're gonna jump right in with tip number one, which is to check your to review list. Now there are a few different ways you can get to the to review section. I'm gonna stop using air quotes now. The first is from the classes page. You can just click the button that says to review, or you can click the menu button in the top left corner and then click the to review button. The to review section is a great way to check on student work that has been turned in but not graded, graded but not returned, and so on and so forth. Here's why this is important. Once a student has turned in an assignment on Google Classroom, you, the teacher, become the owner. This means the student can view the file, but he or she cannot make any changes. You want to make sure you return assignments to students once they've been graded, of course. That way you are no longer the owner and it returns the ownership to students because if you wanna clean out you know, your Google Drive, which we'll come to later in this video, you don't wanna be the owner because if you delete it, it's gone forever. I think they were stolen and they're gone forever, so. Technically not forever because it hangs out in the trash can for 30 days, but after that, it is gone forever. A quick little hack for you, especially from the to review page, if you are wanting to open these assignments, but you want them to open in a new tab, if you hold down the command button on a Mac and then click, or the control button on a PC and then click, it will actually open that assignment in a new tab, which is super handy as you're going through and grading and returning assignments. Once you have graded the assignment, like I said, you want to return it to students. You can click the blue return button in the top right corner. You can either return assignments individually or you can grade a whole bunch and return multiple at once. Just click the little drop down next to the return button. As you're going through your to review section, you can always use the drop down at the top to filter by specific classes if that makes it a little bit easier. You know, sometimes when the list is shorter, your motivation increases. But your goal is to have all zeros next to turned in. And then the ultimate goal is to have all zeros next to assigned, which means your students have all turned in their assignments. I know that that is a dream, but you know, goals. That is an excellent goal. Now, once you are completely done grading and returning a specific assignment, you can actually click the three dots on the right hand side and then mark it as reviewed. This will move it off of your to reviewed section and move it into your reviewed section. Don't worry, you can always go to the reviewed section by clicking at the top and you can always go back and view an assignment, but it just kind of moves it off of that section so it feels like a to-do list item is done. Tip number two is to copy your class for next year. I don't make copies, I'm the boss. In order to copy a class, you wanna be on the classes page on Google Classroom. You're gonna hover over the class and click the three dots in the top right corner of that class and then choose copy. Now it will take either a few seconds or a few minutes just depending on how much content you have in the class, but it makes an exact duplicate with all the same topics and all the same assignments saved as drafts. It will not copy over your roster, so don't worry, you won't have any students in the class, but it will save you so much time to already have those assignments saved as a draft. That way, all you have to do is open them up, make a few changes as needed, and then post or schedule them. And remember, students don't see topics unless an assignment has been posted under that topic. So when students join that class, they will not see any of the topics until you've actually started posting the assignments. Now, I mentioned that copying a class does not copy the roster. It also also does not copy over any announcements on the stream page, which may be a good thing or it may kind of be a pain because you're like, wait, I wanted some of those. Don't worry, you can always copy announcements from a previous class, even if it has been archived, which we will come to later in the video. Now, personally, I recommend making the copy before you archive the class, but once you have archived the class, you can always make a copy after as well. Which brings us to tip number three, 
archive the class. <laughs> I'm gonna start by saying, do not delete a class. I feel like that needs to be on a t-shirt or something. You do not need to delete your Google Classrooms unless you like make a fake class because you're just playing around. Sure, delete that. But any classes where you have had students enrolled, do not delete them, archive them instead. So in order to archive the class, once again, you wanna start from that classes page, hover over the class, click the three dots in the top right corner, and then choose archive. You're gonna get a message with all kinds of warnings of what's gonna happen. Basically, when you archive a class, it's going to freeze the class. Students can no longer turn in assignments. They can't make changes. Even you as a teacher really can't make any changes in the class unless you restore it but it's going to move the class off of your main classes page and move it into your archive section. It's almost like taking it and putting it in a little filing bin just in case you need it later. Not only does it remove it from your classes page as the teacher, but it's also going to remove it from your students classes page, which if they're enrolled in a lot of classes, that's going to make things a lot easier for them. Don't worry, you can still view the class at any time. Just click the menu button in the top left corner, choose archived classes, and then you can still open up the class. You can view the students that were in it. You can view the assignments that were turned in. Everything is there. It's just kind of frozen. Once the class has been moved into your archived classes section of Google Classroom, you can still go back and make a copy, which is what I mentioned in the previous tip, or you can always go back and restore it. This is like bringing it back to life, you know, unfreezing it, dethawing it, if you will. Bad management. Good thing I mock. But keep in mind, if you restore the class, it not only brings it back to your classes page, but also your students. So just, you know, good to know. But again, do not delete a class because once you delete a class, you no longer have access to any of the student work that has been turned in. So it's always good to hold on to just like, you know, old tax returns, <laughs> but you also would not be able to copy any posts, assignments, announcements, which can be a huge time saver later on. So just archive the class. Don't delete it. Tip number four is to clean out your Google Drive classroom folder. I'm gonna start this by saying if you have a Google for Education workspace account, which most likely if it's a district account, it falls within that category, you really don't need to worry about deleting things because they have so much storage it just, you don't need to worry about it. But if for some reason you are not using a Google for Education Workspace account and you wanna, you know, tidy things up, this tip is for you. First of all, let's talk about how to find the folder because sometimes that is the biggest struggle. <laughs> From the classes page, if you hover over a class, you will see a little folder icon at the bottom. Once you click that, it will open up the Google Drive folder for just that class. But here's a little hack for you. Up at the top, it kind of shows you the location for that folder. So prior to that folder, you should see one labeled classroom. Unless you have renamed it, then it could be something else, but most likely it's just named classroom. If you click on that, it will bring you to your Google Classroom folder that has all of the folders for your classes inside. Do not, under any circumstances, delete the classroom folder. You can move stuff around inside, you can delete stuff inside, but do not delete that classroom folder. I have people email me all the time saying, Michelle, I deleted it and now my Google Drive is a mess. Assignments from students are just popping up everywhere. What do I do? Y'all, it's a pain. I need to make an entire video on what to do if you have deleted the folder because it ain't pretty, but don't delete it. Now, I mentioned you can move things around or delete things inside of that folder. Personally, I don't really delete anything because I just don't feel the need, but I do like to move things around and organize them a bit. Personally, I love to make an archived folder. So all I'm doing is creating a folder within the classroom folder, titling it archived, and then I move those classroom folders for all of the classes that I've archived into that archived folder. But another little tip for you that you may find helpful is creating a work samples folder. Whenever I start, especially like a big project, I love to be able to show students an example. So I will actually go through my folders, find examples of student work that I wanna hold on to, and I will move them into the work samples folder. Now you can either move the file as is or just make a copy and move the copy of the file into the work samples folder. But it's nice to have them all in one place so it's nice and easy access. Now the other part of your Google Drive that you're probably wondering about is your shared with me section. That little shared with me section can be a nightmare. And personally, I don't think it's worth it. 
I just leave it. Technically, you can go into your shared with me section and you can remove files. And so long as you are not the owner, which that goes back to why you return assignments to students, because if you haven't returned it, you are the owner and removing it will delete it for good. But if you have returned all of your assignments, you can go in and remove them from your shared with me section. The file does not disappear. It just disappears from your shared with me section. Personally, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. You know what I mean? It's just not worth it. I have accepted the fact that my shared with me section will always be a mess. And if I can accept that, I think you can too. And finally, tip number five is to clean out your Google calendars. But why? I know, didn't think that one was coming, did you? Here's the thing, when you make a new class on Google Classroom, it automatically creates a corresponding Google Calendar where it will show all of your assignments and the due dates and when you're posting them and all of that. Personally, I've never even really looked at them, but they're there. Now don't confuse this with the calendar button you see on the classes page on Google Classroom. If you click that, it's just gonna show you like a week by week view with all of your classes. And of course you can filter by single classes, but there is also a calendar on your Google Calendar. To actually open the Google Calendar, you can either go directly to the Google Calendar website, so calendar.google.com, and you will see them listed on the left side under your calendars, or on Google Classroom, open up a class, click the classwork tab at the top and then click Google Calendar. That will actually take you directly to the Google Calendar page with that calendar displayed. So you can do two things with these calendars if you're no longer using them because you've archived the class or you just don't really care about it being on your Google Calendar. You can either hide the calendar or delete it completely. It's your call. In order to hide the calendar, you're going to hover over the calendar name on the left-hand side, click the three dots next to the calendar name, and then select hide. If you want to delete it completely, instead of clicking hide, you're gonna select settings and sharing, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then select delete. You're gonna go through and repeat this, especially for those classes that you have archived, because even though you archive them on Google Classroom, their Google Calendar is still hanging out. So, you know, just get it off of there. Otherwise you have 100 calendars and you can't keep track of anything. That is going to be it. I really hope that this video helps make your end of the school year just a little bit easier. And if you found this video helpful, please share it out with a teacher friend as well. I also have some other Google Classroom related videos, which I will link for you down in the description box. I have a Google Classroom tutorial. I have one all about organization for Google Classroom, which is perfect for the beginning of the school year. I have one with general tips and tricks. I have one specifically with tips and tricks for grading within Google Classroom and how to grade fast because we all need that in our lives. <laughs> and then I do have one that compares the teacher view with the student view, which is super helpful. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.